I did a video not so long ago about uh, the Freedom Summits in 2014 where Mark Darwin, Adrian Brunock and Mark McMurtry, we can see over here in the bottom corner, were all involved with the Freedom Summits. And this other guy standing to the far left, I think, is Stuart Jensen. Not 100% on that, but uh, yeah, that's... The other three that, um, so we've got Mark Darwin, Adrian Brunock and Mark McMurtry. We know them pretty well. If you've been looking at Nightcap on Minjimble, you know these people pretty well. Now just over here in the audience too, see behind the railing here where the mouse is going up and down? That's Samantha Backman. I don't know, that might be Paul Sales next to her. I don't know. I don't even know this Paul Sales and I haven't really looked at him. And... Uh, well, when I did see the video on Mark Darwin's website, um, YouTube channel, it never really appealed to me because it was called Anti-Terrorism Laws and Occupy Movements. And I've, I've already seen enough Occupy Movements that, you know, the people organising them usually end up in jail. Like there's one here that, um, oh, I can't even remember the name of it now, um, but it was being promoted a few years back and you know a lot of um, people thought this was an answer and the people running that ended up in jail because it wasn't the answer but the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, I've been going back to look at the associations with everybody and I've discovered that um, Mark Darwin doesn't want people to see these things anymore <laughs> And this video itself is actually uh, kind of key to understanding a lot of the conversations that he makes on his own YouTube channels in the past about uh, this man that became the investor, this man that, you know, took his credit card debts as frauds to the police, made a complaint, did it through insurance, and then what was it? He went to um, Fossil and... Cossel and you know lawyers and ended up um, doing that five times, five times. Uh, there were hundred and uh, hang on, hundred and twenty nine thousand Amex, twelve thousand other. There was thirty seven thousand he mentioned as one. That was when he was up to the third. He was going for his fourth, but by the time he's got to here. He's done at least five. Now, I'm bringing this up because the significance of him having those five debts just wiped out, one of those was a car loan, was that he had to sign a statutory declaration stating he believed there was fraud on the account. So that was the stat deck that he had to sign, that he swears to the best of his ability and truthfulness that he thinks that there's fraud on this account. And the other requirement for making his debt disappear was that he sign a non-disclosure agreement. Now, I'm pretty sure we all understand what a non-disclosure agreement means. It not only means that you cannot speak about it in public, but you can't speak about it full stop. It is non-disclosure to anybody. They are paying for your silence. You do not get to tell your story. You get to get your debt written off and shut up about it. That's it. You do not get to speak to anyone about it. That's what the non-disclosure agreement is for. So he's done this five times. Five times he's written out a statutory declaration stating that he believes that there is fraudulent transactions on the account. Five times he's signed non-disclosure agreements, which means that any time that he has spoken about how he has done this, that he has done this at all to anyone, he has broken those non-disclosure agreements. Now, one of those non-disclosure agreements would have been with Amex because I know it was an Amex, thanks to what Mark Darwin said about it. 
that uh, that was that 127,000 one was it? Uh, 129 sorry and the car loan well the car loan and other visas and whatever he booked up with five five debts written off in the same manner very very distinct manner uh, over three hundred thousand dollars worth so in the respect of where in the video of dreaded cheetah where you know they're silent censored and lies or whatever it was where he said that they pursued him after 2014 in these summits and they made him sign you know you can't speak in public actually it wasn't even the ATO that did it was the ones that the five that made him sign non-disclosure agreements now in one of um, Mark Darwin's older videos he talks about how he's going to bring this AB on with his unique experiences he doesn't name him as AB because the barrister or the lawyer has advised that it's not a good idea because he's under these non-disclosure um, he signed them five of them five non-disclosure agreements and five stat decks and in those stat decks he swore to the best of his ability and the truthfulness that he believes there was fraud on this account wow if he was Pinocchio he would have been tripping over his nose wouldn't he now in the previous video I pointed out that it was, you know, all these nightcap on Minjimble members and would-bes if they could bees that are listed on the nightcap website as, you know, how did you hear about this, about joining them and getting into their, in inverted commas, cult. <laughs> uh, yeah, I even bought up the page we videoed it we looked at it you could see all these videos and all the members of nightcap on Minjimble. now I go back there today to actually well not today last night to find out if the date that I had on the video was actually correct and I thought well half the videos are gone it's like what and isn't it strange that every single video that I named as being associated with Nightcap or Minjimble have suddenly disappeared. But they've only been hidden. They haven't been deleted. Because if you click on about, like yeah, click on about, have a look at the total views, go to videos, do some maths, you definitely know that there's ones there still holding views but they've been hidden from the public. So I dare say that like Dreaded Cheetah when they had their bit of a, you know, spotlight on the nightcap on Minjimble, they hid that for a while and then brought it back out again. I dare say that that's probably what he's got in mind. So it's clear that Mark Darwin still has access to this channel. So uh, to hide them. <laughs> or is it just sheer coincidence? Yeah. I mean, after all these years, 2014, that was five years ago, and what, he suddenly decided, you know, after five years to hide them now? And to hide them, not delete them? It's like, yeah, I'm not really, not really buying that one, are you? But I did actually have a copy of them anyway, so... Um, that's why I've done my video later tonight because I've been uploading to my archive org all the videos that are hidden here I've uploaded to archive org he even hid the one with uh, Max Egan at um, when they were talking about Palestine and everything and oh wow I've forgotten that I'd seen it I would hide it too. In fact, I would delete that video. That is so embarrassing. That's bad acting. You know, there's a part through there where Max Egan starts talking about the Palestinian uh, people and he starts saying how they're beautiful and it's almost like through the whole video you can see that someone else is in the room moving around. It's quite annoying actually after a while. 
And it's almost like on cue, he went from being, you know, talking in one thing and then it was like, right, now pretend to cry. And he's going, oh, they're beautiful people. And he did this for about, oh, a minute, minute and a half. And then, again, just like that on cue, as if someone had said, right, the pretend, you know, fake cryness, stop. And, oh, yeah. So there's a copy of that inside... Um, I'll show you. Mark James style, and that's all the videos that are from all these other channels that I took copies of, where he actually does talk a lot about AB. And you look at um, where he talks about how he became his partner um, early, well, early 2012 or late 2011. So he'd been his partner from then on in. By 2013, uh, in May, he had written off three and gone for four. Uh, or had he gone for the fifth? I don't know. See, this is... Yeah, if I don't have these things in front of me, I can't be sure because you've got to try and tie in all the webs. <laughs> and I don't want to get people confused, so let's stay on track. So that's just all the videos of um, Mark Darwin that I've been able to... It tells about the building of the Bellingen community too. There's ones there that before they even bought it, uh, people that were involved with it. There's even videos where he's talking about that there's this one guy that wants to get into it and he wants um, someone else, a friend of his, wants to pitch in but they're not a couple, but because they're not a couple, he objects to the fact that, well, you know, I don't think we should let them come in because, yes, this guy helps out youth and he says that he intends to have a lot of people stay there. So, you know, even though he said we'd keep an eye on it, you know. So he's basically doing videos to people to get their opinion in the community, in the people that are involved in whatever he's involved with at the time. Because it just seems to be anything that he does, he's a bloody salesman at it. So the videos that he has hidden on his channel, except for two, uh, in this folder now, Mark James Darwin, Freedom Summits 2014. And you know the good thing about uploading stuff to Archive.org is that Google Search picks these up and it makes it readily available to the public. This is why I was always uploading to Archive Org. I was only up dry, uploading to Google Drive because it was easier for others to access it. But in doing so, it doesn't make it publicly... Well, it is publicly accessible if you give it the link that way, but it's not publicly searchable. And ultimately, when people look for information on things, they should be getting a balanced perspective. So on Archive.org, uh, it actually sees inside all of these folders and zips, and uh, if it's associated, it'll come up. I've seen it come up quite a few times now. <laughs> Not only that, but my uh, videos as well. So um, it is creating a balanced narrative out there rather than a one-sided one. So I'll leave links for these two there. This one, uh, Freedom Summits, because of the length of all the videos, it was um, oh, 2.1 gigs. Now the, you click on it, it goes through them individually. You can download or watch them individually. I'm just telling you, it's a big file. Uh, the other one is, oh, I think about six, seven, eight hundred megabytes. I can't remember. But that's not as big. But that's likewise in a folder. They're all listed separately. You can download or watch separately. And uh, if you need to, um, I can convert these Freedom Summit ones into the smallest ones my um, program will do for you and upload a copy of that so that if you're on the limited bandwidth and you can't actually access something that big, which I know what it's like at times. Now in the uh, folder that I just showed you on Archive.org of Mark Darwin, there's all these videos in there. Now this May newsletter carries on from 
Where is it? Is this the one with the newsletters? Yes. This is where the newsletters start. So he's got the very first one there, the second edition, and then there's the um, one on here, wherever it is. <laughs> Can't see for looking now. There we go, right at the end. Okay, so in that folder is all of this, except for this one here. I didn't bother, bother doing that one. But this is uh, CAF, is Creative Foundation. Now it's interesting in all through listening to all these videos on here, here, and here, which is all just selling caravans. <laughs> Even that in itself is very informative because that's what he's doing right now. But um, and well, even the ones that he's hidden on here that nobody else can see. But as I said, I've uploaded them, except for. Um, Tyler Tolman's uh, Live Healthy, Be Happy and Paul Sale's Anti-Terrorism Laws and Occupy Movements. They're not in there. But what's in there is the one with Mark Darwin and AB, the one I showed you just before. Uh, there's Max Egan deprogramming the collective, Mark McMurtry on the OSTF and Sovereignty and Philip uh, Phil Morandini on Thrive Life and Precious Metals. So that's all in there, along with that one where uh, Darwin interviews uh, Max Egan. And he does his... Oh, I'm sorry. It is just so much like uh, um, bad scripting. You know, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, next thing. Now, I did a very short video previously on what a rainmaker is. And I'd like to recap it because, as I said, there is a significance to the terminology of Rainmaker and the terminology that is applied to consistently Mark Darwin, Philip Dixon and Adrian Brannock. They always are associated with these things. Now, what is Rainmaker in business? Okay, so in business, a rainmaker is a person who brings in new business and wins new accounts almost by magic, since it is often not readily apparent how this new business activity is caused. It, it's me, it means generating substantial new businesses or additional cash flow from sources sometimes outside established business channels sometimes by connecting with people in non-traditional or hidden markets and sometimes by promoting current clients to spend more money. And I want to highlight that bit because in the uh, explanation, the short one, I blah blahed over that and this is an extremely important point here when it comes to the techniques that have been observed by many people. That sometimes by prompting current clients to spend more money. This is a consistency that I've heard from many people that have said once they've invested, they're asked to invest more. Oh, oh it's only a short-term loan, you know, when we get in another investor, you'll be the first one on the list to get your money back. As long as you shut up and agree with this and don't ask to look at the accounts and ask where any of the other money is going, yeah, you'll be sweet, you'll get your money back. <laughs> anyway, finish with the explanation, shall I? A rainmaker is usually a key figure in the business or organisation, not merely a salesperson, but a principal or executive who is usually highly regarded within the enterprise. So, yes, I don't want to go on and term, uh, do about how it's associated with misappropriation from the Native American culture and making it rain because, seriously, I don't think the Native American Indians could do much with eating money. It doesn't make crops grow. The water does. Rich soil. <laughs> Loving the land. Yeah, but these ones want to make it rain money almost by magic. So this was again a term that they kept using in their business names. 
four business names. Now, I'll just bring up the next thing now. This is Rainmaker Group Holdings. And part of what makes up Rain Group, oh, Rainmaker Group Holdings, let's have a look. So the people that are in the current position of being Director and Secretary are Mark James Darwin and Philip Dixon. Philip Dixon is also the Secretary. They are both Directors and they have been that since incorporation on the 9th of March 2000 and... Oh, hang on. Yeah, 9th of March 2017. So essentially since incorporation. Previously, Adrian Peter Brannock was also a director from the date of incorporation, but on the 9th of August, he ceased. And that was, well, five days before his final bankruptcy hearing. So he'd done a lot of shifting around before that. Well, he had to. Before he resigned and moved other things around, he had to organise Nyepi. And only on the 8th of August 2018 was Nyepi taken out of all of his name and put into his wife's name. Now, I did look up uh, Nyepi. Uh, it's got a meaning uh, somewhere in Bali. Um, yeah, sidetrack. I won't get into that. But it's just, again, why'd they call it Nyepi? <laughs> What's the significance? I mean, there's always a significance in a name. So uh, why did people pick that? So now we take a look at the current share structure. So the current members that are holding shares are Nyepi, Loved Ones Tribe and Dixon Rainmaker. We know that Adrian Brannock was a previously a director to just before his bankrupt final bankruptcy hearing. But you see, he's already service under service of a bankruptcy notice. Moving these shares around at all is an attempt to conceal things from the bankruptcy discovery. And not d disclosing it is another one. <laughs> so, um, yes, we already know that Nyepi is Adrian Brennock before he put it into his wife's name. So he's getting still getting the benefit back. Loved One's Tribe was... Uh, previously, Mark Darwin, he put it into Loved Ones Tribe, which is in the name of Carolyn Coleman, his partner. And Dixon Rainmaker has always been Dixon Rainmaker. I think it has. Or he might have been Philip Dixon. It doesn't matter because Dixon Rainmaker is 100% Philip Dixon anyway. So that we can see that previ previous members or shareholders were Credit Clear Australia and Boundary Property. Now, I can tell you that Credit Clear Australia is listed as a cross di directorship and role w uh, for Mark Darwin. So that's the previous role where he had the shares in Credit Clear Australia and then he put it into Loved Ones Tribe through Caroline Coman, his partner. And Nyepi previously was Boundary Property Toowoomba. Now, Boundary Property Toowoomba was pretty much the Brennock family business. And there, at a certain stage, Christy Brennock took over sole shareholdings and directorship and secretaryship. And then shortly, I think it was either shortly before or shortly after her husband's bankruptcy hearing, it became deregistered. And it actually became deregistered because of an ATSIC application. You see, um, if mail is returned from an address, they'll give you a response. And if you don't um, respond, well, they'll serve you a notice. And if you don't respond to it, you become deregistered. Or if there is no activity lodgement through that company within a time period, they will all also say that, you know, nothing's been going on, you don't exist as a company, um, we're going to strike you off unless you tell us that you want to stay on there. Now, I'm bringing this point up too because this has actually happened with a lot of the businesses. 
Rainmaker Group Holdings actually had the same notice put on it that we are going to strike you off because nothing's been going on. Uh, we've had mail returned and ultimately we don't think uh, you exist anymore. We're going to strike you off, deregister you. But that deregistered, uh, they've got two months to respond to it and then if they don't, uh, they get deregistered. If they do and object, that's why the notice is served, that uh, the company reverts back to registered status. So Rainmaker Group Holdings itself has actually had a period when it was in the process of getting struck off because of return mail or whatever reason and then someone from Rainmaker contacted them and it then went back to registered status. But a lot of them, uh, to especially to do with uh, others, uh, never made it past the de you know the ATSIC notice. They just went to be deregistered. Now, while we're on the subject of boundary property and and how I've just explained that it is a Brennock family business, and how Christy, Adrian Brennock's wife, took it over. Well, Christy so generously lent her husband $154,571 uh, to Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited because Boundary Property Toowoomba is actually a listed creditor for um, getting money back off the sale of Wollumbin Horizons. $154,571 a wife lent to a husband, but did it on paper from company to company. And yes, that uh, doesn't usually wash these days. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'll get more into the point of uh, Mark Darwin's association with these because um, I've said that they might have had a falling out, him and AB, you know, they were best buds, but he's still very heavily involved in it. And this Rainmaker Group Holdings holds a lot of shares in all the things that are controlling the nightcap on Minjimbal. So, you know, he's a major stakeholder and he is also the uh, director. Now, if he says, oh, yes, I might be a director on paper, but I've got no power, well, <laughs> If that's the case, you should have just lodged, I'm getting out of this. You know, you don't have to wait for permission. There's a form for that. But uh, when I searched Nimbin Road Quarry, it came up with Mark Darwin, also as a director, along with Philip John Dixon, again, as director and secretary. Uh, can you see a pattern here? If it hadn't have been for Adrian Brennock's bankruptcy, He'd be still in there too. But he gets represented through Nyepi. That's not the cross directorships. This is. So from the perspective of already holding one directorship in Nimbin Road Quarry, there are two other current office holdings and other roles in Rainmaker Group Holdings and Rainmaker Development. And down here, are the previous office holdings and other roles. Organ Amazing, Credit Clear Australia, Wollumbin Dreamtime, Rainmaker Eco Investments, Nightcap Village, and Cannabis Industries Australia. Now, Organ Amazing is deregistered, Credit Clear is deregistered, Wollumbin is, uh, Dreamtime is deregistered, Rainmaker Eco Investments is deregistered. Hang on. <laughs> So the only two companies that he had previous dealings with that are actually still legitimate companies are Nightcap Village and Cannabis Industries Australia. And they've just been moved into different names. Now, Nightcap Village used to be Mount Warning Eco Village. And Rainmaker Eco Investments used to be Freedom Summit's Ethical Investments and they were the ones that they operated the uh, Freedom Summits under, the Rainmaker Eco Investments, previously Rainmaker Summits, 
ethical investments. Ethical investments, my ass. Now, Wollumbin Dreamtime is also associated with um, the Wollumbin Horizons and Bulla Bulla. And Organamazing actually received from the Wall Trust account from Wollumbin Horizons that was supposed to go into the formation of the community and everything. And it actually showed up as it looked like Wollumbin Horizons uh, bought purchased the business Organamazing. They paid $80,000 and the only description said purchase. Or purchase what? Did you purchase the company? Did you pay 80000 for that company? And as a company for 80000 uh, how do you justify that you would have paid 80000 for it? Where is their business? Where is the justification for that value? But then if it's not a business that you just bought, what did you just purchase? I mean, you can't just put purchase. Purchase what? Purchase the company for 80000 Again, this is all part of their bad records designed to, well, where did it go? It's like a magician when they pull a rabbit out of the hat, except it's the reverse. It makes the rabbit disappear, doesn't it? So... You can see here that there's a lot of association. Rainmaker, Rainmaker, Rainmaker. They really have got this thing about Rainmaker. So you can understand why I got the curiosity about what's the significance of this Rainmaker. I mean, I kind of knew that it would have been where the basic idea of making it rain something and it, it probably meant money but to see that it's not only, yes it is, but there's a lot of businesses that set themselves up as rainmakers. And as far as I can see, it is really stretching the boundaries of being ethical. Now I've seen a lot of people talk about tapping into non-conventional markets. I just think that's a really pretty name for saying illegal or ways that you can find to con someone. You know, it's just non-conventional markets. Yeah. I just don't like the vagueness of that terminology. And look at how that vagueness in that terminology. This technique has been applied through the people in Nightcap on Minjimbal. You can clearly see that because they've named their companies after it. The mother company, the Rainmaker Group Holdings, where everything's feeding back into, uh, is the Rainmaker. And it is, it is fit. The description of it fits uh, exactly what they've been doing, where they've magic money, yet yeah, not only seems to appear by magic but it also seems to disappear by magic yeah that's a kind of a new twist that they're not explaining on wikipedia isn't it <laughs> and that's what i mean about non-traditional i mean there's so much vagueness even when he talks about uh, mark darwin talks about registering the um foundations as a non-government organization you know that not having them with the oversight of the ATO or ATSIC. No, but you still have to register with ACNC as an NGO. You know, and then you get left alone once you've shown that you're valid. But if you, if you just go, oh, look, I'm incorporated or not incorporated. I'm a foundation now because I've got articles of foundation that are lodged with a lawyer somewhere or... I, I vaguely put them somewhere that, you know, lodged them there that would never make it over there or, you know, whatever they do. They're, and the thing is that Mark Darwin has talked about this in his past videos where he said that people have had the tax office and ATSIC come against them and they've not found, uh, and they've taken everything else, but they've not found their NGO foundation. And that's because it's not actually legitimately registered as an NGO foundation. It is illegal, no matter which way you look at it. Because 
you have to have your foundation registered as an NGO. You may not then be subject to the oversight of ATSIC and the ATO, but you still have to have it registered at ACNC, you know, <laughs> which they aren't. You know, they're not doing that. And Mark Darwin has said that over 300 foundations have been created this way. And he said that you can operate and do anything out of them and nobody knows what you're doing. You don't have to fill out a tax return and, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Well, yes, if it was built on the right foundations in the first place, that might actually be the case. And I seriously hope that there's no one out there that's actually got themselves a foundation that you haven't registered with the ACNC. Because if you really do want to be a legitimate foundation and have the status of not having to put in an annual tax return or having ATSIC searchable or anything like that, you first have to give some kind of validation to your position. Not otherwise there would... There is just no, you know, like the thing, the whole thing that Mark Darwin sells is that all oh, their foundations, as long as you're not making any money and you give it back to people, well, he says uh, he he gives all of his money to free to shine. It's like, are you serious? You're giving it away. All right, so I'm going to finish it off there by pointing out a few things that have happened over the years that certain of individuals went to court and swore to the court that the first development and the second development or even whatever incarnation of the development that they weren't related and yet now as you look back over time you can clearly see that that must have been a down outright lie they have always been and still are all related. The only thing that has changed on the surface is the apparent relationship between Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock and the name in which Adrian Brennock holds shares which has gone from him to Nyepi because he's a bankrupt and he can't be doing any of this. But you know he's been as I said Rainmaker Group Holdings has, hang on, I'll just refresh the shares. Now really one of the biggest investments that Rainmaker Developments has is through the Mount Burrell commercial because it owns 1,200 shares and it also, through Philip Dixon, he's got shares in uh, Dixon Rainmaking and also in his own name and uh, there's other ones that have also got shares. So ultimately, those that represent Rainmaker Group Holdings, with a few making it larger, like Michaela Lowe and Richard Moat and Cherie Stokes, they all hold the majority control of the shares and money assets or whatever. So ultimately, anyone else that's got their 200 shares in there your opinion's worth nothing. And Rhyme Earth Healer, or Rhyme Turnbull, is, he's been trying to get his 200,000 back. And, you know, it, when they said they didn't have the money back, that was when their share values were only, you know, a million odd. Now they're up to three million and they still can't give him back his 200,000 somewhere in between. Uh, I think, uh, you know, they've done the Rainmaker magic and made it disappear, I think. I don't think there's 3.75 million. Well, hey, I'd be happy for them to produce the records and prove me wrong. Uh, do it. <laughs> anyway, um, hang on. Now, this here is just a little breakdown of what each one of them, as Mark Darwin, Philip Dixon and Adrian Brennock received through the various names and holdings in Rainmaker Group Holdings. 
So they each hold 100 shares each. So Rainmaker Group Holding holds 1,200 shares in Mount Burrell Commercial, and as I explained, the majority share. 510 shares in Nimbin Road Quarry, which is all the shares. Uh, 100 shares in Rainmaker Developments, which is, again, all the shares. And 510 shares in Nightcap Village, which was previously Mount Warning Eco Village. And of that, they have 510 ordinary shares, 300 C shares, and 423 D shares. And there's a distribution um, a little bit higher uh, on the ordinary shares and on the C and D shares too. I can't remember who it is here. But uh, yeah, they, they don't own the majority of it. But they would through the other holdings, dare say. At this stage, there's um, the association with Mark McMurtry and Derek Zillman is brought in in other aspects where they all tie in together. These three are going right back originally to where, as I said, that it's like they're forming the cap on the pyramid. <laughs> they're the top of it. Uh, so previously, Rainmaker Group Holdings held 60 shares in Nightcap Realty, which is the one selling it. And the current position of the company is that Mark James Darwin, Philip John Dixon are both directors. Uh, Philip Dixon is also the secretary from its first registration. And the shareholders, as I said, a third each through Loved Ones Tribe and Dixon Rainmaking, as well as um, Nyepi, because this information came off Nyepi's um, list of shares and just dis breaking it down so that you can see uh, it took pages to actually detail all the things that Adrian Brennock's getting benefit for because he hid things in the name of Nyepi. And it's all tied around August 2018 and his final bankruptcy hearing. So everything he's done has been very deliberate. You can even see here that the, the dates of 9th, well, the 8th and of August constantly comes up, changing directors' names, moving shareholdings. It's done quite a few times. So you can see that um, there's quite a few financial interests and these interests through Rainmaker Group Holdings are equally uh, Mark Darwin's and Philip Dixon's as well as Adrian Brennock. So they are one third of the whole. And recently Mark Darwin made a choice. He was asked are you going to reveal or conceal? And I think we can find out the answer to that, can't we? Has he revealed anything or is he just concealed more? This is an act of concealment on his channel to hide his involvement, to get rid of things that implicate him. You know, there comes a certain stage where People just have to own up to what they've done. You know, you just cannot keep running. Go and watch dolphins cry. You know, what is it um, live that do it? Yeah. Watch that. You can't keep running. Sooner or later, you, it's going to catch up. So you better to stand, take it, take it like a man. <laughs> well, more to the point, take it like a woman does. You take it on the chin, keep going, you know. You make a mistake, you set it right, and if need be, you pay the consequences. And you don't do that again. <laughs> you know, you don't keep concealing more stuff and concealing more stuff to, it's not, not the acts of an honourable man. Mm. Anyway, that's a bit of a sum up on Mark Darwin and what he's been up to. He certainly has no intentions of revealing anything but concealing even further. That is unfortunate for him. But he makes the choices. We all make our own choices, don't we? <laughs>
And on that note, I'm going to say catch you next time. It's probably long enough, and I'm sorry about that. I do try to shorten them, but yeah, <laughs> catch you next time.